good evening um okay actually it's good afternoon sorry about that it's actually good afternoon everyone um welcome to my channel welcome to my channel welcome to my youtube um if you're here for the first time please like subscribe get comfortable um go through my content uh, feel free to leave a comment um and just share if you find value um from any of the videos that i'm posting up so yes it's Sunday afternoon. I usually do this uh, video uh, recording um, every Sunday evening, just before market open. Uh, Sunday evening, um, about 7 p.m. Kenyan time. But usually, my weekends these days are so crazy. Um, you know, prepping my seven-year-old for school the next morning. So just evening routine. It's kind of gotten a bit hectic, so I just decided to do this bit, these um, uh, videos, uh, my analysis for the markets a bit earlier during the day when things are a bit settled uh, Sunday afternoon. So yes, it's 12.43 p.m. guys, um, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya. So whenever you'll be watching this uh, recording, um, hopefully it'll still add value to your own analysis and preparation for the week. So that being said, this is our weekly uh, Sunday market analysis pre-market analysis um but before i just go there i i i just want to mention a couple of things um about our week last week so we had a very interesting week as you can see um gold is still in a range okay um this is on the 30 minute time frame it's still uh ranging sideways there was a bit of a fake out here thank god we were not caught out on this this was on friday um, and I remember telling people in my channel on Telegram and on my Discord uh, group where I have my mentees, I remember telling guys that the only time, you know, because there's this really crazy push to the upside, okay? Um, and, you know, this rally here was definitely uh, maybe confusing for some people. Uh, maybe new traders would have been retail traders would have been caught out here because it looked like the market was going to break out. But what I usually tell uh, guys is when gold is on the weekly structure, okay, just don't um, don't anticipate the trend in the direction that you think it's moving to because usually on the weekly structure there's a lot of manipulation. So we are seeing the manipulation here. We can see um, gold broke out, and we can see we can see the candle on the day on the four hour. This was an indecision candle. So if you were not looking at the four hour, you would have assumed that this was actually going into a breakout. Because think about it, this is a pretty pretty nice bullish uh, engulfing candle that you know uh, signifies some sort of uh, strong momentum to the upside. But then there was this candle here, okay. Um, if you're on the lower time frame, it kind of looked like, okay, we could actually be prepping to break out, yeah? But then there was this um, uh, happening here, okay? And guys, that just showed us, nah, that's not happening right now, okay? So basically, we saw uh, gold push back down. Now, I was a bit nervous about calling out this trade. I still did. I had already given uh, a sell stop um, pending order on Thursday morning London session and it panned out. Okay, so we bagged about maybe 117 pips on gold, a really nice clean trade. But let me tell you guys, I was really nervous about this um, trade because, and this is where the psychology of trading comes in. And I just want to talk about that before I go into the analysis. Um, the day before, um, I had traded, um, I had called out US 30. So let's just look at US 30. US 30, and uh, was it the day before? It was the same day. US 30 and um, the, the day before. So US 30 and German 30. Okay, so if you look at German 30. And so this is German 30. So we see... Um, I got caught out, you see, after this, I made the mistake that I'm telling you guys about, that um, I actually thought US 30 was going to begin to buy. I thought it was still uh, German 30, for example, was was going to, you know, um, 
start buying and you can see this here and it didn't okay so it's it it's hit our stop loss at 50 points so we we lost about 50 was it 50 or 43 points thereabouts on german 30 and i had called german 30 and i had also called us 30 thankfully for us 30 um our trade thankfully was in profit like about 30 pips you see it this week here this week here um but then it dropped <laughs> So when I saw after this long rally, and these are the common mistakes that we, in hindsight, right? After this strong rally down, and I, I was like, okay, looking at the structure here, which eventually happened the way I thought it would, I was like, uh, uh, US 30 has broken previous structure here. It has come and it's broken previous structure here. So looking left, I'm like, okay, this is a pretty, pretty, um strong level of structure and i didn't think that it would actually break through okay um it didn't really break out through it just faked out below but i didn't anticipate for it to do that at this point in time i thought it would do that later on so i put my pending order up here because i knew that it would push so I, I was like okay this thing will continue pushing down and then it will come up but guess what happened it just pushed out and then triggered our uh, buy, buy limit. And we were in 30 pips in profit. And I was like, yeah, now we are back in action. And then it dropped, okay? Um, it, it dropped and then did its thing here, picked all of us out, or rather gathered all the liquid, liquidity here, took our stop losses out, you know, sellers and buyers, um, and then pushed up in the direction of the trade. So it's not, Per se that I was wrong in my in my general trend analysis, but I my entry was premature and I forgot that we were kind of approaching um, the end of the week and sometimes towards the end of the week there's a lot of manipulation in some of these uh, pairs indices gold you see um, yeah so that was that was um, so after this uh, trade here. And then we go back to German that I called it in my signals group as well. And we were stopped out. I was like nervous about taking another trade because we'd had a really good week. Um, generally, um, Tuesday and Wednesday were good trading days outside of the in two industry trades that went south. So those are the only trades that went south on Wednesday. So everything else was really profitable. And I think we did about four, maybe 13 trades to um, uh, hit stop loss. And then, uh, but then everything else was in blue and made good points in terms of growth. Um, so, but then, so on Thursday, I was nervous about taking another trade because I knew that um, the market has a lot of manipulation. So I actually only called out trades in the London session. And I thank God I did that because it was crazy. Um, gold, uh, gold did well, okay, but I think we entered one or two other trades, maybe one other trade, and I'll check on my uh, on my Telegram group. Uh, yes, um, literally just uh, just hold on. Let me I'm just confirming on Wednesday or was it on Thursday? Yeah, so on Thursday, we did seven trades and three hit stop loss during the London session, okay? And one of those three was the German 30, where we, we, we lost um, about 43 points. And I was nervous about the gold, taking the gold trade. But I was like, you know what? And this is the thing, again, back to psychology. Sorry for rambling a bit longer than I should on this specific topic. Um, but the thing about trading psychology, I was like, Lillian, you've you've done this for so long, you know how gold moves, you know how the market moves, you know the structure of the market, you know all these things. And usually what separates good traders from the struggling or unsuccessful traders is just the, your mental headspace. So I just gave myself a pep talk, I remember, and said, you know what? Yes, we've taken a couple of hits, but if I look at it in the grand scheme of things, um, this past week we've done, we've still averaged out 83%. I think my psychology in terms of was a bit battered because despite us doing so well, 
um, the trades that I really wanted to go my way didn't. And those were the indices. Okay, and you know, indices, because I usually put a bigger uh, risk to reward. The risk, if you lose, you lose bigger. Because um, when it comes to the currencies, I found ways to get entries whereby at least I can put a minimum stop loss of about maybe 14 pips, 13 pips, sometimes 11 pips, 18 pips thereabouts. So even if we get stopped out, we can recover on other trades. But you see with indices and gold, which really move aggressive, sometimes you have to give your, your stop loss a bit of room or wide, wider berth to move and breathe so that you're not prematurely stopped out. So my psychology was a bit messed after the, the, um, the German 30 uh, trade that went, didn't go too well. And then the two indices, trades earlier in the on I think on Tuesday that also didn't go well um so I didn't want I didn't I wanted to secure the bag in terms of get out of the market with what we had I didn't want to take any more losses and I didn't want any other the traders in my signals group to take any more losses because obviously if I call a trade they will take it with confidence right so I also need to manage um, um, the accounts remotely psychologically you get what I'm saying so but thankfully, I overcame my fear and I was like, Lillian, you know, you know this fair pretty well. This is how it's going. And just do your thing. And I'm really happy because I actually was able to, <laughs> to get the 100 pips um, on gold. Um, and you can see it was a beautiful, beautiful trade. It took a bit of time to mature. And I kept on updating people in the group and uh, dropping screenshots so that they could just see um how things were and yeah so then it dropped and you can see and then it pulled back so this is where we are at at gold so guys when it comes to trading just know that what is going to get you ahead you can know everything you can know all the different trading kind of retail strategies out there you can know about um elliot wave and moving averages and you can use the ichimoku or you know any other you know um harmonics and everything you can know all those things okay you can know the candlesticks price action different names of those candlestick patterns and 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 whatnot but if you're not confident as a trader you will not get to the level of trading that you need to get to now what has helped me as a trader to get to a level of confidence i will definitely give it up for my signals group those 60 subscribers in my signals group do a lot to my confidence as a trader because I believe uh, I, I, they have entrusted themselves, their, their trading to my analysis. Does that make sense? So that one gives me confidence, a confidence boost. And thankfully, the last four months, we've been able to average great returns um, on the signals okay on average we do 80 percent and above we've had months where we've done like almost 90 percent in a week um in terms of the average wins like out of all the trades that i call out in that week maybe 90 percent of them actually hit take profit and this could be take profit from 10 pips to 100 pips okay so this is just an average uh figure of course past results don't re uh, guarantee future results but because of the consistency that I've been able to produce, that's a second thing that builds my confidence. Every single day when I'm trading in the market, I do the same thing. I go through the same motions. Um, so it's become almost like second nature. My analysis is almost like second nature. Um, and yes, you've heard, I don't always get it right, um, but I do get it right a lot of the time. So that's that. So you need to be confident. You need to be consistent. You need to have a risk plan. So. For example, my risk plan here, as you can see, when you look at this short tool that I placed here for gold, um, is basically have a risk toward of maybe what two is one is to two or more than one or one is to three or one is to two point six. Um, but at a minimum, one is to one is fine, guys, or one is to one point five is also okay. Um, but I like a risk reward of two is to one, about two is to one. Um, so I risk one dollar to gain two dollars. That's usually uh, a good risk to reward um and 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 i know that some people especially in the beginning when people are still trying to make money as traders and they're just starting out they don't like to take losses but i use stop loss so for example if this trade had reversed it would have hit our stop loss of 50 pips it would have been out of the market 50 pips 
But guess what? If we are gaining, we've gained about 100 N because by the time it reversed here, uh, at least by this level, we were about this exit, sorry, we were about um, about 100 pips. So twice, two is to one, right? That's my risk to reward. Of course, it drops a bit more, um, but that's a really good risk to reward. So you've still protected, you still know worst case scenario if you lose out. And if you lose out, then you can plan your other trades. So for example, I'll trade maybe one trade at a time. I trade bulls and indices. So if I don't see a setup on the indices, I am definitely on gold. If I don't see a setup on gold, I'm on the indices. If I don't see a setup on either gold or the indices, I'm on GBP USD or GBP JPY. So you need to have a plan. And then of course I have a target. I'm like, okay, I want to trade one trade at a time. So if I'm scalping, because there's sometimes like gold, especially I'll scalp it. Um, other currency pairs I'll do intraday. So if I'm scalping gold, um, then I know that I'm looking at, I know my lot size. I know the number of trades that I need. I know that my daily pips profit target. When I hit my target, I'm out. Another thing I do, if I have three consecutive losses, I'm done. And that's why on Thursday, I was like, we've already done about three losses in the current. I am not going to trade the New York session. And I actually communicated that to the group in the team because I was like, the signals, the subscribers in my signals group, because I was like, guys, we've done pretty well this week. Um, so far, we've taken a couple of L's, but we are still in profit. We do not want to trade in the New York session because we don't want to have to roll back okay then something else in my trading plan i um i don't trade on fridays for example it's just me nothing doing i just don't trade on fridays some people trade on fridays that's fine but what i'm saying is have your plan so i've done this consistently okay i trade the london session i personally get into my trades in the london session okay um on Mondays, though, if I don't see anything in the London session, especially like on the gold or the indices, I'll wait until the New York session. But mostly, I'm in the London session. You will not find me entering a trade in the New York session. Why? Because the kind of trader that I am, I don't like to keep my trades overnight. Okay, I want, I'm intraday. I want to close my trade in the day. Okay, if it rolls over overnight, well and good. But I don't see the need to because I'm nervous, I'll be waking up at night. I want to sleep. I want to sleep till morning and wake up London session, trade and be out, okay, in one or two hours. So that is what has created the mentality of my psychology, has improved my psychology as a trader. And that is what has given me the confidence to even be able to say, guys, I can actually be able to handhold you and help you to show you the rules, okay? So that's that's that. So, um. Moving on now to why we're here, guys. Um, I'm going to quickly go through these pairs. Um, thank you for being patient as I went through the <laughs> first five minutes or so just rambling about trading psychology, but I hope it's, uh, it's uh, you've gotten the point. Um, so yes, we are on gold. We are still uh, having a sideways move here. Generally, I've been telling gold guys that gold is bullish, okay? So this here was a counter trend, but mentally i knew that gold is bullish we are still bullish if i look at the daily time frame on gold we can see that this you know this literally this drop here this is about what um wow about one one thousand fifteen hundred points pips okay um or more seventeen hundred pips drop so gold was pushing up like okay and then this is kind of like a correction and then it pushed up and then correction so right now we are still scaling lower highs so we are still kind of in a bullish uh space um but we invalidated the the drop the bottom and you can see we started pushing back up so i'm still like this could just be a correction like there was a bit of a rejection here so correction um, there's opportunity for gold to, you know, definitely drop and kind of come and grab some liquidity down here. But right now, the way I'm looking at, um, we are still at the moment still looking kind of bullish. Okay, we still have some imbalance in the market. I think there's a bit of a correction that needs to push gold price up. 
So I am still, you know, though we are ranging down, okay, we tried a couple of times to just start pushing price lower, but this rejection here, and then now we scaled a higher high, so technically still in a bullish space. Um, but that being said, on the lower time frame, um, let me look at the four hour first, because I like looking at gold on the four hour. So on the four hour, I still feel like there's room for gold to push up, okay? We are at a, a support, we, we actually hit this support level, okay? Um, and didn't make it past that, which is fine. And then we bounced off that and then we began to consolidate here. So this, this could actually be two things. Either, uh, you know, price is, is in a distribution phase here and possibly wants to now begin to shift lower, or we are in an accumulation phase and because of this uh, um uh you know fake out here could just continue to push up to just grab some more liquidity here before now we continue to the uh downside so i am still looking at um, potential uh moves up but as you can see on the 30 minutes it's just a sideways uh thing going on we fail to break structure here we may attempt to go up, but you know, we could just start pushing lower. So really long term still bullish on gold. Okay, still bullish on gold. Um, but I would definitely will want to see um what happens because I, we could push lower. It's just that there's a lot of um uh liquidity here. So I feel like price will definitely come back to this level at some point. So expect that to happen. Price to retest the 1792 levels thereabouts um, because it didn't do that on Thursday here or Friday. Okay, there was a bit of a rejection. So continue pushing up, but I definitely think it will eventually come back down here. So when you see that movement down, just know that this would be the next potential area. But if not, Gold is gold. We may just break out to the upside. So that being said, sorry, I do take some time uh, on gold because it's what I really trade the most. Um, but let me look at something else. Let me look at US 30. That, uh, you know, clearly just did its thing. You know, just told me who's boss. I love you, US 30, but hey. Yeah, so that's US 30. Um, um, US 30, uh, let's see, let's see. Still pushing up, guys, still pushing up, but we are at a very interesting level of structure here on the 30 minute. Let me just look at the daily. Yeah, um, you, you can see what happened here, like price pushed down, rejected, pushed down again, uh, came grabbing liquidity at these levels and is now pushing up. This is a very, very strong bullish engulfing candle i will not be surprised if we actually retest this previous high um, whether we do break it or not um i'll wait to see because um we haven't retested that level since may of this year um so that's just where we are at right now okay i mean us that has just been bullish 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 um for a time okay we've just been really bullish like this is the highest us 30 has been in may that was the highest us 30 was uh in its lifetime really so i'm like will we are we ready to break through i'm not so sure okay it's one of those um things i feel like even if we do try, there could be some manipulation or a fake out here. And I still feel like we're going to be like in a bit of a sideways kind of movement um, for a while because we've just gotten into this range here. We've been in this range since March. So I feel like we could, I mean, we are, we are rejecting on the downside. Um, so I'd like to see what happens, but I'm still biased on a sideways move before we see any strong attempt to the upside so let me look at gbp usd gu um 
similarly tried to break structure up here, came back down, is back in this level, uh, still bullish. There's nothing that has yet, that's on the weekly, on the daily, nothing yet has invalidated my bullish sentiment. Um, we are in a bit of an kind of like a distribution phase here going on. Um, these are the daily closed on a very bullish engulfing candle. Um, you know, so still looking bullish to me. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the 1.39886 level is a possible next target. So, I mean, that's like what? That's like um, 90 pips away. We, if we do break this structure, then we will likely retest and continue on our way up to kind of attempt to get to that level. So right about now, yes, still, 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 still. If I look at this price action, yeah, still bullish, guys. Um, unless something happens, still bullish. And like I said, that's about 86, 90 pips. So yeah. But like I said, key level of structure up here. We could just fake out and come back into this zone, which I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but if we do fail to break the 1.38595 level, then we are definitely pushing to the upside. Then GDP, JPY. So something interesting, guys, is I noticed. Um, so I noticed um, I have been actively um sharing signals um for a couple of like since i definitely opened my telegram group that was in 2019 of may but at that time there was nothing happening really in terms of just just random like you know whenever i see opportunities i share with with uh, the group of traders we, i was trading with at that time um but and i knew my success rate in terms of you know when i'd make losses you know and things like that but the last four weeks for me have been very crucial because what I got to learn as well, and this is something you also have to know as a trader, get to know your edge. This is something I teach in the beginner's class. Get to know your edge as you transition into trading, as you transition into becoming a professional trader from a novice trade trader. You know, that time where you know kind of everything about trading, but you're trying to break into the tangible income um making in terms of trading so for example this is gj gj is also bullish guys um there's nothing much there i can say we are you know this is how we closed we are definitely still scaling lower highs but yeah so i'm waiting to see what happens with market opens but right now on the daily still bullish i feel like we're in a bit of a a bit of accumulation distribution phase um ranging so we could see some up down movement and whatnot i feel like this is a fake out you know try to fake us out we're going to the downside so yeah anyway so as i was saying i have discovered that i've traded so many pairs okay um but in the last and of course i'll be able to dial this down a bit in the last um four months I think I've shared over, you know, at least every day I do like about five to 10 to 13, 15 sometimes trades. Let's keep it 10. So 10 times four is 40, 40 times four is 160, 160 times four months um, for the mathematicians in the house. Um, um, just doing that math is about 600 and and 640 trades. So on average, I've done about 640 trades. I've shared about 640 trades in my signals group. Now, the interesting thing is, out of those, I just discovered this on Friday, out of those trades, I narrowed down and I have about five currency pairs that really do well, including, excluding uh, gold and the indices, which is US 30 mostly. So, Unbeknown to me, and this is something you'll discover for yourselves, guys. GBP JPY is actually one of the my my best winning trades. Most of the time, ninety percent of the time, it's um, take profit. 
GU as well, um, as including, so we have that, and then we have another pair that my, um, that we were looking at with uh, Jane, who is part of our team. And I was in shock because I was like, G U G G G J G U E Euro N Z D Euro A U D. So let's look at Euro N Z D. Euro A U D and Euro Cards. Like the what is shocking for me is that I don't even like trading, for example, um, Euro A U D that much personally. Personally. But funny thing is when I look at it and I call it out in the signals group, most of the time it is uh, take profit. Eurocard, I love Eurocard. So that one was not a, was a, a no-brainer. But what I did think would be not in this list was Card JPY. I love Card JPY. It does very well. But funny enough, Card JPY, most of the time, when I call it out, it does it take profit. But I thought, I didn't think it wouldn't make the top five. I didn't expect Euro AUD to be in that list. I didn't expect GBP, JPY to be in that list. So anyway, the point is, I now know my edge in terms of my analysis, in terms of my call, calling out of my trades. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to improve the signals um, so that the winning rate of the signal, so that if people are in my signals, majority of the time, they're actually in profit on majority of the trades. So I'm narrowing down onto trading only five of these pairs that I have analyzed data-wise, statistically, and been able to say these are the five winning pairs. And then I have then, so I'll be trading those, only those five or sharing signals on only those five, as well as gold and US 30 or German 30. So those will be the seven um, pairs that we trade in our signals group, GU, GJ, Euro NZP, Euro AUD, and Euro CAD, as well as gold and US 30. So that for me was really eye opener because I discovered my edge. And that's the point. When you discover your edge, it also adds up to your trading psychology and your mentality as a trader, because now I know this is my winning uh, streak. And also I know not to touch some pairs, like catch me dead trading um, Euro GBP. I know guys love Euro GBP, I just can't do it. Um, anyway, so Euro NZD has been dropping, retested. It's still, I, I've been in in a very interesting, I mean, Euro GBP, Euro NZD has been in this um, sideways thing going on. It kind of broke structure up here at some point, uh, failed to really, really just make big move there. I feel like we are pushing back to the upside um on euro and the d so we'll wait to see how the market opens um i wouldn't be surprised if we saw a retest of the 1.80235 level that's on the daily if i look at a lower time frame yeah still still i feel like this is a retest before we continue to the upside so i am bullish on euro and the d so let me look at another popular pair that i have a success rate in uh that's euro ad um, I don't know, this thing, this baby here is just looking um, bearish. Like I feel like we may push lower, possibly to the 1.57614 level and then maybe continue to the upside. So that's Euro AUD. That's on the lower time frame though. Um, higher time frame. Yeah, still telling me the same thing. We we rejected this break to the upside, okay? Because that would have been the make or break for Euro AUD. Um, and I feel like we re retested this key uh, zone here and we are now headed back to the lower levels, okay? Um, so yeah, this could be, because this was, you know, we shifted lower, um, kind of consolidated and now pushed up back to this level of structure, which is a key level of structure and rejected off of this level. Um, so I feel like we are now going to continue shifting lower because anyway, Euro AUD for a while has been shifting lower. Okay, really, really trying to break this level here, failing miserably since 2018. Um, as you can see, last was here in February of this year. 
So I feel like because of this lower structure being formed, there's still a lot of bearish uh, momentum, you know, bearish uh, strength. So I'm bearish on Euro AD for the week. And then one more trade that I like is EuroCAD or Shizzy. This is a pair that I do like. So EuroCAD um, has just been consolidating kind of in this range, you know, um, has been a bit stuck since April at a certain key level. It retested that level in um, July 7th last week uh, for the first time. So I feel like we have just bounced off and will continue pushing to the upside, you know. Um, that's what I am seeing. Although, of course, on the lower time frame, it's looking a bit different, but I feel like we've, we've come and retested a key a previous support zone around here. So, yeah, we should continue pushing the upside. So, generally, we are bullish, but the only pair that I'm looking at, we may see correction down immediately or sooner, is Euro AUD for now the continuation to the upside. But, yeah. So, that's it for today, um, this afternoon. I hope you guys have had have learned something or seen value or yeah um yeah and of course apologies for my rambling earlier about trading psychology but guys honestly people ask me the same questions every single day and i'm like you know guys will ask me questions like how much do i need to start trading what loss size should i use um stop loss how you know what strategy and i'm just like guys bottom line bottom line Forget strategy, forget everything that we are taught as being very important. The most important thing is your psychology as a trader. 90% of people don't fail because they don't know how to trade. 90% of traders fail because their mind is not right. One, they probably fear losing money. Two, they are afraid of taking risk in the market. So they're busy trading 0 0.01 lot size on a $1,000 account, which is fine. But you'll just grow slower. And if you and why are you trading 0 0.01 on $1,000? I mean, this is just me asking you that question because you have enough room to put a bigger lot size like 0 0.01, or I mean 0 0.1 and, and so on. Um, but that's just me or 0 0.05, you know. Um, so some people will fear taking bigger risk. So they... They take too long to grow and then they get frustrated. So they quit within the year or the two, or over a year slightly. Others are afraid of losing money. So they never either get into the market or they cut their losses. Their, their, their draw, when they just get into red, they see drawdown, they jump out of the trade or they get out of the trade too early when they profit. So they grab their profits too quickly. They're not, they're not patient to wait for them. It's just psychology because if, if, and then later on, you know, you've jumped out of a trade and then you see it has pushed all the way to wherever it's pushing. So, guys, the, the, the way we build our fortitude and our, our mental fortitude as traders is practice, 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 and consistency. I keep telling people since 2018, I have not stopped looking at the charts, even when I made the biggest losses in my trading career. I can tell you some of the biggest losses in my trading career didn't happen one time, didn't happen two times, it happened multiple times. There were times in my signals group uh, when I was not yet um, organized as I am right now. I would share signals, but I couldn't even take my own signals because I had blown my account. I remember in September of 20, was it 19 or August of 20, July, August of 2019, I think I blew like $4,000. I'm not proud of this, guys, but I'm just telling you that this is where I am today. It's 2021. I never stopped. I never stopped. So if you take a loss in the market and you quit because of that loss, you're going to quit everything else in life. And you're always going to settle for average. And you're always just going to not get to where you want. Forex is a real industry. Trading is a real Thing. I mean, guys who trade even cryptocurrency and understand how to analyze the charts. It's a real thing. Like we look at Bitcoin, like I can look at Bitcoin right now with my Forex education knowledge and apply it in crypto. Of course, crypto is a bit more complicated in terms of 
analysis because it's heavily, heavily um, manipulated. There's a lot going on. There's uh, so much information you need to know also in terms of what you need to be looking at before you decide um, to get into the trade crypto or get into a trade on an exchange and so on and so forth. There's so much. But basic analysis is the same. You know, like, you just need to be confident to take the risk, okay? So like now, um, BTC USD is looking like it wants to break structure here, but right now, I'm personally, personally, I'm still bearish on Bitcoin. Not bearish, I'm still looking at it pushing lower before it breaks out. I'd really like to see Bitcoin push lower before it breaks out, but who knows? You may see it just break out to the top side. Highly unlikely, in my opinion, for example. Um, highly unlikely. I still, you know, I don't, if I if I see BTC hitting this level, 32K again, and 31, I'll be like, now we are ready to kind of push up. But we may just, you know, push out and then continue consolidating. Because really, we've been consolidating, even if you're scared, scaling lower highs. Um, but yeah. That's just my run, my my two cents on BTC. But this is looking good, prepping for that, you know, push to the upside. But like I said, I would like to see some lower action happening before that happens. So thank you guys um, for tuning in. Please, if you haven't yet liked or subscribed to my channel, please do. Every time you do, you allow YouTube algorithm to do its magic and more people are able to see my videos. And I think my goal is just to help more traders out there get better in their trading and grow their accounts. So thank you guys and have a lovely, lovely afternoon and amazing trading week ahead. Thank you.